Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Marvel Legends Blade 6 inch action figure. As usual, please like, share, comment, subscribe, or even hit the super thanks button. I do appreciate all engagement on my channel. So let's take a look at the box. Up top, we have the Blade logo with a couple of daggers. Down to the bottom, some product information. And on the side, we have artwork of Blade gritting his teeth. On the back of the box, we see the full version of that artwork. He's actually crouched over and holding his katana. Description of the character over here, more of the characters in this wave, and finally more product information at the bottom. And finally, on that last side is the reflected version of that same artwork. I've been waiting to get this guy in hand, so let's go ahead and get him open. Now the box the figure is over here on the plastic bubble. He comes with his one sword, two double-sided curved blades, two wooden looking vampire stakes, two interchangeable gripping hands, and finally that mindless one builder figure head. Blade comes with two alternate gripping hands cast in a dark flash tone plastic. These are articulated inwards and they also bend outwards. He also comes with his typical katana. This one is cast in a dark metallic plastic with red paint for the hilt. Likewise, the other two double-sided curved blades have the same deco, that dark metallic looking plastic with red paint also for the handles in the middle. And finally, he also comes with two stakes. These are cast in the brown plastic and they've got a little bit of soft wood grain detail in them. Popping on those gripping hands and he holds his katana and the curved double-sided blade just fine in his hands. I do wish that at least one of these gripping hands would have had an up-down hinge instead so that he can wield his weapons differently in either hand. The katana also stores nicely in that sheath mounted on the back of his plastic trench coat. So he can now hold on to that wooden stake and the curved blade. However, with his hands full, he doesn't have anywhere else to store the other curved blade and stake. Now we've seen blade equipped with such weapon holders on his gear in the comics. So this is a bit disappointing that he doesn't have anywhere to store these extra weapons, especially when we live in an age where Hasbro's producing G.I. Joe classified series that usually can store all the weapons that they come with and those figures can actually go around empty-handed. So I'll say it's a bit disappointing that he cannot store all the extra weapons somewhere on his body. Now having a look at the sculpt and paint of the figure, besides that really really nice head sculpt, I do think the rest of the figure has been executed, looking quite mediocre. First up, the torso is reused from the previous blade figure, which itself was also used on Paladin. So I'm a little bit disappointed that Hasbro couldn't even give us a new torso. I do like the overall proportions much better because he stands a little taller and Hasbro's also beefed up his arms and legs, so he's not as scrawny looking as the previous release. I do also like that he comes with his trench coat now, which is a callback to his iconic 90s look. However, this hard plastic trench coat also doesn't let his arms settle down nicely by his side, so his arms end up sticking out quite a bit, looking a little like an awkward bodybuilder. And once again, Hasbro also has the mix of the elbows where you can see the pins, but the pins are concealed on the sides of his knees. So it's baffling to me why Hasbro couldn't just have made those pins just concealed on his elbows. I do like this head sculpt very much. It is cast in a dark flesh tone plastic and it's got glossy black paint for his really iconic angular flat top haircut. The paint applications are also really sharp so you see that nice barber pattern down the sides of his hair. Very neat and very cool hairstyle. The black paint also extends to his pair of shades. And his overall expression is really nice. Sculpted with a mean, almost kind of like hissing expression, the digital dot matrix painting means that he's got very sharp paint applications for the whites of his teeth and the subtle shading around his face really bringing out that mean expression very nicely. I also want to commend Hasbro on the very sharp sculpting for his fangs. You can literally see how sharp and fine the sculpt is on those canines. However, as with all screaming head sculpts, they do tend to look a little boring and old after a while. So it's looking at them for too long like this, he looks like he's just having a yawn. So I do have an unofficial personal policy that for every figure that comes with a screaming Screaming head, they should be given one that looks just in the normal neutral expression. That being said, 
the two head sculpts do swap between the two blade figures. So the only way that you can get a neutral looking blade with his trench coat look is to have the previous figure and swap those heads. Really typical Hasbro, where you really need a couple versions of a certain character in order to have all the parts for the different poses and display options. Now he's got the hard plastic trench coat. This is sculpted with a couple of details like that color and a couple of buttons on the front. I do like the red paint on the inside. It adds a very nice visual effect to this character and makes him look visually striking. However, as with all plastic capes and trench coats, the plastic is just really thick and rigid and definitely hinders a couple of action poses. The trench coat does have that sheath attached to the back it's slotted in and glued in place, so there's no worry of having it drop off. There's also a little bit of nice sculpted detail on the back of the trench coat for that waist belt and also some folds in the fabric. His arms also do have quite a thick sculpt, mostly cast in the black plastic with dark flash tone paint for his forearms and that also matches the dark flash tone plastic used on his hands as well as his head. So to demonstrate my point about his arms sticking out really awkwardly with that thick plastic trench coat, I removed it from the left side of his torso. His left arm now rests more naturally compared to his right. So I'm tempted to say that a small modification to that hole for his arms on the side of the trench coat could potentially let his arms rest normally down his sides, but that would also mean a slightly larger armhole over here. Now completely removing his trench coat, I think he actually looks just fine, like he's wearing a black shirt with some armor plating put on. However, in this state, he really looks quite dull because he's lost the visual effect of the red color on the inside of his trench coat and once again also clearly highlights Hasbro's aversion to paint applications. You can see that even on the older figure there are little hits of glossy black paint and silver on a couple of buckles here and there to kind of jazz up that armored look. But on the new one, besides the red paint on the trench coat and the dark flesh tone paint on his forearms, the rest of his body is pretty plain. You only have that one hit of silver paint for his belt buckle. So visually, he's worst off without that trench coat. He would probably benefit from having a soft fabric trench coat that's also got a poseable wire and that way you can make him much more poseable and getting into more dramatic action stances. I will also say that a soft fabric trench coat should also come preferably sleeveless because if it were to come with sleeves that would go over his already really thickly sculpted arms, the fabric trench coat could actually make him look a little too top heavy. And as I mentioned, about his lower body, there's not much paint applications. It's just dark grey plastic for most of his legs and pants, with a couple of details like the knee pads and the cargo pockets down the side. The pants are also sculpted bunching up just above his boots, which are in a black plastic. There's boot lace detail sculpted on the front. There's even a bit of detail that's also sculpted for that hinge joint. However, that sculpted detail is also misaligned compared to the rest of the laces on his boots. So I was really looking forward to having this blade action figure in his 90s look. However, aside from that really nice screaming head sculpt and a snazzy looking trench coat that's not really functional, the rest of the figure is quite disappointing. For articulation, I removed his restrictive trench coat so you can see the full extent of it, his range. He's got a ball hinge at his neck so he looks up quite well as well as down, spinning 360 and he's got a little bit of sideways wiggle. Swivel hinge at his shoulders so it goes 360 all the way around and also comes out just that much. Swivel at the bicep for 360 spin, double hinge elbows with those pins still visible, getting decent range beyond 90 degrees. Mid torso hinge so he bends forward that much and backwards. Swivel at the waist so he spins all the way around. Ball jointed hips that go out just that much and no problems forward and backward. Swivel at the thigh for 360 spin. Double hinge knees with the pins concealed and that's pretty good range. Swivel just above the boot and a hinge at his ankles so it goes up as well as down. An ankle pivot for outward and inwards. Blade is decently articulated, however as with hard plastic capes and trench coats, it gets a little restrictive to get figures into more all action stances. Just in a pretty basic wide or deep action stance, the trench coat already looks quite weird and awkwardly sticking out. So Hasbro really should be getting their act together. They're already charging higher prices, so they might as well explore some alternative fabrics and materials. 
especially for Marvel Legends, where posability is such a key factor. So here's a quick mod that I've done to get his arms to rest more naturally down the sides of his body. You can see his left arm now resting much closer to his body compared to his right. So I went ahead and cut off a piece of plastic from just under the arm opening on the trench coat. It's about that much plastic and almost 4 millimeters to the deepest part of the cut. It's a little unsightly, but it's also hidden beneath his arms. Furthermore, the inside of his outfit is also a dark grey or black, so there's no color contrast to distract you and bring your attention to this small cut made on the side of his trench coat. And here he is with also that little piece of plastic cut off from the right side. You can see that his arms now fall a little closer and more natural to his body. It's not ideal, but this will do for me in the meantime until I source for a soft fabric posable cape. And in case you're wondering how his arm looks on the modified cape compared to with the cape off, this is about as good as it gets because even with the cape off, he's got a quite a thick sculpt on his arms already. So this small modification to the trench coat is a small trade-off to get his arms resting more naturally by his side. For size, blade stands at just over six and a quarter inches and that's about 16 centimeters. For size comparisons, here he is with two Spider-Man and Morbius. And here he is with Black Panther, Ghost Rider and Punisher. And for comparisons with other lines, here he is with G.I. Joe Classified series. I was excited for this figure, and the hit sculpt certainly lived up to the hype. I do appreciate the range of weapons he comes with, but I think he sorely lacks an alternate hit with a neutral expression. From here on, everything else on this figure is mediocre at best. I really dislike his thick, rigid plastic trench coat, and the absence of paint applications points to Hasbro not putting in enough care and attention in the design. It's precisely this poor attitude that's hurting the Marvel Legends line, despite this one coming in among really rare releases of the character, I'm still recommending you skip this figure unless it's on clearance. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel or even hit the super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.